arm because you're good at what you do. Early morning time to go to work. Let's get it. I mean, this plan is very big. Huge plan. It almost seems like it goes for miles and miles. So all that is planned. It's crazy. sorts of pipes and angles and positions and things going on. Welcome to new construction. Good to be out of those nuclear power plants and back in the grind. Damn, boy, look at them go. You showing out today, ain't you, Ben? I've never ever seen uh -huh. my life. <laughs> Flex, Ben. Uh -huh. Flex. Uh -huh. Boy, that's the strongest <laughs> welder right there, boy. <laughs> He got it. That's the man right there. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> so yeah, this morning we was welding on some uh, three sixty foot pieces, uh, Schedule Forty pipe, and um, what happened was we pretty much had an issue. And the problem was my fitter. I, I told him to give me a three sixteenth gap on my 12 inch schedule 80 pipe. You go at 3 16th because what happens is after you put about two quarters in, it shrinks down to a 532 gap opening. So he gave me the three, well, he didn't give me the 3 16th that I wanted, but in certain spots, it was 3 16th. And uh, the thing about it is, if you don't make sure the face of your pipe is square, you're gonna have valleys in between your gaps. I mean, in some spots you're gonna have what you asked for, some spots you're gonna have a little over, some spots you might have a, a loose eight. So that's what was going on. So, you know, me being a good welder, I said, you know what, it's all good. Maybe he's not that good of a fitter, so I just decided to go with it. So as I started putting my quarters in, um, the pipe started closing up like expected. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna do what I usually do. I'm gonna just rip it. So one of the things about ripping pipe is that after you put your four tacks in <laughs> and you decide to open a gap, you gotta realize what's gonna happen. You're gonna have a dog leg, long story short. A dog leg is like a bow in your pipe, whether it's crown style or bow. Some of you carpenters out there know what I'm talking about, but that's just how the, how the pipe would look. So I had to fix that and I end up running the heat from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock and then from 12 o'clock back to 3 o'clock and I did two passes on each side I went up 
the pipe from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock, then come down from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, then I went up from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock, then I went back down from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And I centered the water. I, I, yeah, I did use water. That's a no-no, but it fixed it 100%. And uh, again, at that point where I stopped at, at 3 o'clock, I soaked me a wet cloth in water. I put it right on that spot where I stopped at. And uh, just kind of hold it there and rub it in that, just in that area. You don't need to rub the whole quarter, but pretty much just in that area, back and forth. And uh, it pulled it perfect. But if you would have saw the dog leg, you would have probably thought it, it wasn't able to get out or be fixed. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Whenever you ask your fitter for a gap, make sure that gap is what you want and, and, and don't hold no punches. Just let them know, look, I want a 532, I want a 316, or whatever you want. Make sure it's that. You gotta hold your fitters accountable because at the end of the day, if your pipe ain't right, it's gonna be your job on the line, possibly. Or it could just be a big headache for you, having to go back and wash the pipe and fix it and do all that stuff you should have uh, took care of when you initially started. Hard work, baby. Hard work, dedication. You gotta get it. Hard work is easy work. Like this, when the employer expect you to still work, but you gotta you gotta find the best hiding space you can find and just get out of the rain. And that's it. Just gotta get out of the rain. I look at it like this: a chicken got a head this small. You know, as a matter of fact, that small. And they know how to do what? They know how to get out of the rain, right? But for the most part, you just gotta stay dry because if you get too wet, once those shoulders get wet and that back get wet, that's it. But other than that, we had a good day. We had a nice, wet, Tennessee day. But it all pays the same. here in Tennessee on a project you already know so if you've been watching this video for a while you've been kind of seeing what it's like to work at a chemical plant just a, a little bit I did show you but uh, it's been four months and you know how I do I gotta get them moving on to the next on to the next one bigger and better things um right now it's uh it is August 31st, getting ready to be September, the first day of September, here in a, here in a day or two, or a day rather. Um, and normally, around about this time of year, around about September, the beginning of October, you want to definitely be at a job for the cold season. You don't want to wait until November, December to be out there trying to find a decent job to go on because around about that time of year, a lot of these projects, they stop hiring. And then they start back maybe mid-June, the end of June, early February, March, 
And uh, what I'm getting at is you don't want to be locked out for the cold season. So it's good if you can go ahead and get yourself together around about this time of year, the end of August, beginning of September, September somewhere, and go to get yourself settled in. So again, you won't catch yourself out there in the cold without jobs. Uh, without a job or without money or digging into your savings and things of that nature. Let's see if I'm in the right spot. No, I'm actually not. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and go on the next floor. Sometimes when you're working way up, in the high rise, you can get a little bit tired of running up and down the scaffold. This is another reason why it's important that you keep the body up the park. We got a real disaster going on in this project. A lot of rework, a lot of things that, uh, it's crazy, but in situations like this right here, when you gotta do a bunch of rework and, and in a sense do the same thing twice, you just gotta pay yourself, you're getting paid. Just relax and do it again. And sometimes you gotta go behind other other people's work, like what we're doing here. So just stay tuned for a second. I'm gonna show you what's, what I'm talking about. But hold on, let me see what's going on over here. Whoa! Woo! Woo! Woo fitters at when they don't give us what we want. We just toss them right into the right into the blades of light. Just kidding. <laughs> it's a really big plant. This is actually one of the biggest plants in Tennessee. It goes for almost, almost, maybe I'd say about three miles. At least that's what it seemed like. But let me show you what I'm talking about on the mistakes that these, uh, these, these inexperienced fitters are making out here in the field. And by the time you guys is coming out of your trade schools and you wanna get into fitting or welding, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. And it may be worse by the time you guys get out of high school and go into your trade schools and, and move forward into your career of welding or fitting or whatever it may be. Anybody tell me what's going on here? That plane right there and that plane right there. Is that vibe on both up like it's close to? We take a closer look. No. It's not. That's somebody work right there. And right here, this is what we had to take off. That stuff right there, they're working on a bunch of rework on some six inch. Basically, it was a whole bunch of vials, turned, not vials, but 90s and 45s, cocked every which way, trying to make it line up for this right here. See that flange right there? And that one there? It was all snaked out and high, low, and everything in between but as you can see this is a big job similar to the one in cartersville georgia but we are in tennessee so that's what the job called for and this is what we hired in you can sit back and you can complain but ask yourself what is complaining you know, where is that going to get you it's not going to get you anywhere but more frustrating that's why I have such a kind of cool, nonchalant attitude. But there was times when, where you know, I was aggravated or irritated by uh, the lack of craftsmanship when I first started. But as you start to move on in your career and get more experience, you learn to just roll with the punches. 
Because at the end of the day, as long as that tank clears, you're good. Now, on the other hand, these fitters be shitting bricks. <laughs> Something about a fitter and how they hate to come in after another fitter and do some rework. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them one bit. But it is what it is. Nobody likes to do rework. Especially the fitters. Job security. Hey, Mr. George. Mr. George. How much you pay for that new guy? What's that? How much you pay for that new guy? That new what? That new guy. That new guy. <laughs> It's just something about working outside. It's always something new, as I always mention on these videos that I make. These different terrains and land masses. It never seems to amaze me. It never gets old. One minute you're on flat ground, the next minute you're in a mountain region. There's just something about it after you put in over 15 years. This past March gave me 20 years in the, uh, in the industry, so. What a little surprise. You just never know what to expect on these jobs. Oh, he's good. This morning we kind of in a bind, as you can see, still on the same project. Um, yeah, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Woo. Let's see what we got this morning. All right. Mind you, it just had like a torrential downpour just a second ago, but we got this butt wheel to make this one inch butt wheel. And um, as you can see, we're on top of the tank. And it doesn't matter how tall you are, how big you are, these welds and these positions do not discriminate. They need you for the job, they need you to do it, they need you to show up and show out. And, uh, Park. 
access this well right here. Uh, I'll kind of lay down across the drum and try to, and I'm gonna try and slide myself under this like that there. I guess you'll be there to see everything. Oh. Woo. My guy just made that six inch well on that 90 right here in front of us. And that was yesterday, it was pouring down. And in certain states you go in, some of the people who work these projects, these plants, the contracts in these plants, they've been out here for maybe 10 years as a contractor. And they started new projects and they bring us on from all around the country. Uh, they have these mentalities that look, it doesn't matter if it rain. You should have been prepared. And I was, I had a full body wet, uh, a full body rain suit. But now that the rain has stopped, that's when the fun begins. When I was down here, kind of drying off the area. Usually you want to go to the tool room and get you some old rags and towels and just dry your area off and make sure you got yourself something that's covering your head like at the top here so nobody won't walk by and spit on you or spill something on you whether it was out of malice or not intentional. It still will happen and it can happen. But for the most part, rain, Sweet as snow. The job must go on. Those other guys are down there, all strung out down there. And we gotta get paid, so it is what it is. This morning we kind of in a bind, as you can see. Still on the same project. Um, yeah, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Woo! Let's see what we got this morning. All right. Mind you, it just had like a torrential downpour just a second ago, but we got this butt wheel to make this one-inch butt wheel. And um, as you can see, we're on top of the tank. And it doesn't matter how tall you are, how big you are, these welds and these positions do not discriminate. They need you for the job, they need you to do it, they need you to show up and show out. And, uh, just made that six inch well on that 90 right here in front of us. And that was yesterday, it was pouring down. And in certain states you go in, 
some of the people who work these projects, these plants, the contracting these plants. They've been out here for maybe 10 years as a contractor and they started new projects and they bring us on from all around the country. Uh, they have these mentalities that look, it doesn't matter if it rains. You should have been prepared. And I was, I had a full body wet, uh, a full body rain suit. But now that the rain has stopped, that's when the fun begins. When I was down here, kind of drying off the area. Usually you want to go to the tool room and get you some old rags and towels and just dry your area off and make sure you got yourself something that's covering your head like at the top here so nobody won't walk by and spit on you or spill something on you whether it was out of malice or not intentional it still will happen and it can happen but for the most part rain sweet as snow the job must go on Those other guys are down there, all strung out down there. And we gotta get paid, so it is what it is.
tax this. So I'm running on 125 amps with a one eighth gap. The way I'm welding this one inch schedule 40, I'm welding it the same way I would weld a border, uh, the same way I would weld a border. You don't play with it. You're not gonna have your amps on 91 amps or nothing like that. You're gonna put that wire where it needs to go, right in the center of the bevel, a little bit below the bevel, inside the pipe below the bevel, you know what I mean? Um, in other words, you want to have your wire on the inside of the pipe. Okay, I'm not talking about below the devil, like below the devil, I mean like inside the pipe. And just walk over. Sometimes it's, a, it's a, a little bit of a push so you can have a little reinforcement, but it's not a hard technique at all. Just try it and you'll realize it works.
reason I'm here with the camera on the pipe right now. I'm, I want to tell you something about this uh, Schedule 40, Schedule 80. Um, this right here is actually Schedule 40, uh, one inch Schedule 40. Um, and what us welders, right, or you welders out there that's not really familiar with your puddle, I put these tacks in on 140 amps. Okay? 140 amps. Now, some of you out there may say, no, there's no way you're going to put tacks in on a pipe at 140 amps. And I'll tell you, yeah, I did. You don't see too much. Tacks look good on each side. There's no secret. It's just a matter of understanding your, your puddle. The puddle is the lifeline and how fast you move. Okay. If your heat is very hot, that means you have to move very fast. That's it. I'm going to put this root in, this one inch schedule 40, using 145 amps. See, me personally, I'm not all about beautiful, cosmetically aesthetics of a weld. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll make a pretty weld, but making it look like shoelaces and all that, that's not my form. Okay? What I'm known for is getting the job done, getting the job done correctly and on time. That's what Chris Dottetta is known for. So, you may ask yourself on Schedule 40 at 140 amps. Why don't you just use 91 amps like you usually do? Well, they need this system turned over. And little do you know, today is my last day. I'm going to be moving on to the next project, like I told you at the beginning of the video. Uh, I've been here about four months. And uh, on to the next. We're going to go to Jacksonville, North Carolina, Campus Jr. So that'll be my second time working out there. But let's see. Let me, let me, let me show you so you won't think I'm BSing you. Please. That's my leads. Let's run and follow my leads. Right here. Let's run them down over here. Over here, over here, over here. I'm not BSing you. So let's go ahead and put the root in real quick. You want to watch me? All right. Wash me then. Wash me work. Wash me work like the Jamaicans say. Wash me. No, was that Jamaican? It's one of them guys that speak that. Speak that tricky stuff. <laughs> let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. No one's here. This is one of the uh, one of the small dilemmas when it comes to filming on a job. You gotta always figure it out. But I ain't gonna sit here and bore you the whole time. But I'm just gonna show you. It's not gonna be a walk the cup, it's gonna be a free hand. Fast moving. Learning the photo, knowing how to go flow. Don't be laughing, everybody done that. Look out 
I'll never be on the cell soon. Don't worry about these uh, these runoff points. You just file that down. We can file and smooth it out. Let's see if we get a... Don't try this at home, guys. Get your gloves. I got hot tips. Over the years, you you, you actually uh, build a tolerance up for heat, so this is why I can touch the plans with bare hands. Not a good idea, but that's it. Yeah. Uh oh, they're gonna QC. I see him coming over, so I'll get back with you guys. You can see some of the room. The androids are funny. Okay. I take that back. Nope. No, I take that back. Yeah. So you can see some of the room up in there. bottom but you get my point you get my point uh, ee, the knees getting old get my point you feeling my drift you know what I'm talking about yeah. so the purpose of showing you that 145 amps you can't be scared you've seen it done yourself you can do it you can actually do that on any schedule pipe the thicker the pipe the more better the smaller the pipe the faster you have to move the thinner the pipe the faster you have to move so once you've been doing it for so long, you realize, like I used to hear when I was young, younger, I ain't damn old, uh, younger, <laughs> getting it, almost 50. But uh, when I, I used to hear when I was young, welding is welding. That used to be a big saying the old guys used to say about 20 years ago. Welding is welding, you'll get it. I'll be practicing my ass off. Ah, do I got it? They go look at it with a flashlight. You get it. Welding is welding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's my purpose of showing you this right here. I'm glad you tuned in with me. And uh, like I said, I'll see you guys on the flip side. I'm glad you guys tuned into the video. Don't forget to go to the website, mygoldenarm.com. Get you one of those 
extremely comfortable, newly designed hoodies. Uh, also, you can go to Tanner.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-N-E-R.com. If you know anybody who need a resume for getting into the field, they can't get a job, all the jobs they call keep saying, hey, we need a resume, at least two or three years of experience. Tell them to go to ChrisTanner.com, go to the welding tutorial side and upload or download uh, the resume. And you could actually uh, copy and paste, fill in the information, remove information and add your information, but it, it, it's something you're gonna need. And if you guys out there that's older and you want more experience, download the other uh, resume. It's all free. So you can't say, hey, something's stopping you. Because you're just stopping yourself. So again, ChrisTanner.com, MyGoldenArm.com. Get the hoodies. I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah, so early in the morning on this particular job, a little small job box. And, uh, Get it on out of here. On to the next, baby. On to the next. Even when you're getting ready to drag up, you take your box and bring it to the front. And uh, tool room supervisors come and look through and make sure you ain't stealing nothing. Five finger discount or nothing. Huh? No, I'm good, thanks. Appreciate it. Leaving, are you? Yeah, I'm out of here. Alright. Yeah. yeah. On to the next. <laughs> Alright, you too. Alright. Right. Good working with you. Yeah, good working with you too, buddy. I hate to you go. You're so welcome. Oh, thank it's, you. It's my fault, man. Right? It's your fault. They can do much well. They can't get your teeth to go. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I see you magic like that too. Eight hours to fucking make a wheel. Just making his main don't make me 40 minutes. Yeah. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. I don't know why. He in there looking. Make you hear how he's talking to the wings. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out what the hell. What's going on? What's up, man? He's been talking to me like that. No way. I don't get it. He talked to him crazy just then, man. Yeah. I don't get it. Hey, yeah. So before I leave this beautiful state of Tennessee, there's a couple spots I wanted to stop by and just to, just to get the view. I haven't had a chance to, to really see a bunch of spots, but I did go to a few spots, tourist attractions like this spot here, um, the caves over here in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, and uh, I guess this is the closing of a chapter, and open a new chapter, and some of the things we can pick up on and take with us and keep and all that good stuff that, um, that the memory does whenever you go to a new spot. So peaceful out here in the mountains.